Uh, in this lecture, we would like to first introduce. Uh, it's in two parts. Huh? First, we want to introduce the uh, classical uh, counter set on the real line. Okay, and in the second part, give some basic properties of the counter set. Uh, keep in mind that the counter set was. Uh, a very powerful tool that people use to disprove some uh, topological properties that people believed they were true. Uh, for example, that they knew that the set would measure zero. Uh, uh, as an example, uh, we had the countable sets like Q, the rational numbers, and they thought that these are the only ones with measure zero, and uh, the counter set provides a beautiful example that, that has a measure zero and is not countable. Uh, it, it has some beautiful properties, and it was used in different uh, examples. So, what is the classical definition or the old original definition? of the counter set. So first we start with the interval 0, 1. Uh, one has to be extremely flexible. Uh, this dichotomy property that we're going to be using to cut and uh, to generate the counter set uh, can be used in uh, with different ideas. For example, in the original definition, what we offered is so you cut your interval 0, 1 into three parts. And you remove the middle one. OK? So if we say this is the original one is 0, 1, OK? the next level we are left with two intervals because we removed one third two thirds so zero one third two third and one so it's a union of two intervals so in the original one we have only one interval and in the second one we have two intervals okay so what do we do now uh, every interval you cut it again into three parts with equal length and you do the same so you go here and you remove this part okay so what do we have here one ninth two ninth one third is your three ninth okay two third is your six ninth Seven ninth, eight nine, and finally you have one which is nine over nine. Okay, so what's left? What's left for e one is, so what's left? That will give you your e two. So we have zero to one nine. And you have two nine to one third, two nine to one third. Then you go two third to seven nine, two third seven nine, eight nine to one. So basically, we have four intervals. Okay, so you keep doing this at the end term, you are going to find these small intervals from 0 to the left to 1, and you have exactly 2 to the power n intervals. Okay, now 
the end point will stay okay so the end point so if you go back so what are the end points you have this 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 they stay okay so you find them at the next level here they are okay but now you generate more endpoints this one this one this one this one and you find them here all of them these endpoints they stay because we are removing open intervals and we're keeping the segments the closed ones so if you go to the intersection now of all this okay so you take now the intersection of all the ENs okay so it's not going to be empty for the reason that I just mentioned that for example 0 and 1 for example 0 and 1 are in okay so this set okay uh, is not empty uh, the ENs is a finite union of closed intervals so these are closed intervals okay uh, so the, the the finite union of closed intervals is closed and therefore the intersection will be closed bounded you are in zero one therefore C is compact so this is known as your uh, C is a compact subset of R okay so this is known as the contour compact subset okay uh, what else also from this definition huh? from this definition uh, what's interesting is uh, look at the length I want to go back here so what's the length of the intervals let's look at it here the length of this one so is equal to one third and this one one third okay and at the next level the length is one ninth each one of them okay and if you go to the next one one over so that's one night one ninth yeah all of them so when you go to en is going to be one over two to the power a uh, three to the power n each one of them has a length one over three to the power n very important when we look at now how much do we remove from 0 1 okay another remark very interesting that I would like to leave it to you to think about it and reflect on it is what happened if we remove not you know we don't cut it by uh, 3 but we cut it by let's say for example 4 just a simple example uh, remark so it, it gives you some flexibility that one can play with this, huh? that was the original counter sign but you can play around with this, for example you start with 0, 1 and you cut it in 4 uh, yeah? and what you do so, and you keep the first one and you remove you remove this one, keep the next one and you remove this one, for example uh, uh, and then you start doing this kind of combination okay and uh, next you go for five next you go for seven etc etc you don't have to just take three and uh, take remove the middle one and keep this you can play with this kind of stuff okay and generate sets that has some nice properties of course the the, the beauty is how much do you take and how much do you leave okay so it's, it's very important because it can give you some at the end some properties that are very interesting and rich okay in the next lecture we will look at some basic properties of C okay and uh, this is again will be useful throughout uh, uh, my notes on the uh, real analysis okay thank you